Hi everybody and welcome to the Waterville Plateau. Mid Sunday afternoon, Labor Day weekend. This is State Route 172, just a few miles east of Mansfield. You're looking west, Mansfield's behind me. And up ahead is a local landmark. Can you guess what it is? Let me flip you around. Jaeger Rock. A big old boulder right next to this road. And there are others nearby. So, my questions today are, why is this boulder here? When did it get dropped here? Are we sure that it got moved and then dropped? And what can we say about all these boulders in central Washington and up here in northern Washington? Okay, well, that's the, that's the idea today. So, yeah, graffiti, but hey, man, graffiti's been around for a long, long time, so we can't blame the kids today. Um, this is an incredible boulder made out of basalt, and the clue to how it got here is what Jaeger rock is nested in. And without working too hard, we can see that there's a healthy accumulation of glacial till. This is what glacial till looks like. And if we zoom in, we can see that there's sandy matrix and a mixture of rounded and also angular stones, most of which are basalt as well. But it's not just this cute little bird's nest of glacial till for Jaeger rock. There's substantial amounts of glacial till all through this area known as the Waterville Plateau. And it's flat. And I think I'm going to continue filming not here at Jaeger, but I'm going to go to the other side of Mansfield to the west, hanging, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 miles to the west of Mansfield. And just before you drop down to Chelan and Lake Chelan, over to the west, there's another rather handsome collection of these milk duds that are up here on the Waterville Plateau. But I don't think this area has been captured properly. That's just my own opinion. This is such a magical place for geology, and it just has not really quite gotten its due. So maybe I'll figure out how to get more eyes on this place called Waterville Plateau. And if you live in this area, you're like, don't get more eyes on this. We like our area nice and remote. Well, I, I know what you're saying, but at the same time, um, I like sharing what I've been able to learn about geology with everybody. And this is a good spot, man. What can I say? This is a good spot. So most geology field trips that involve the Pleistocene make a pilgrim, pilgrimage here to Jaeger Rock. So this is, this is nothing new, but I don't think that I have shared this place with you, even if you've been a long time viewer. Okay, so I think there's confusion, just generally, about boulders like these. And to me, there are three choices. If we have a boulder, that was dropped during the Ice Age. And when I say the Ice Age, I mean the last 2.6 million years worth of time. That's what all geologists mean. And yes, there were multiple advances and retreats of ice worldwide in the last 2.6 million years. But uh, many of you know what I've been doing lately, and that is I'm asking uh, myself, and therefore many others as well, when I make these programs, are we sure that all of the Ice Age stories are tucked into the late Wisconsin, are tucked into just the most recent 20,000 years? Okay, well, in this particular episode, the answer is yes. These boulders, these milk duds, were deposited north of Withrow, Washington, younger than 20,000 years ago. Everybody agrees on that. That's not a problem. But I'm up here to look at what glacial till looks like from that vintage. 
And if we do manage to find glacial till that is not younger than 20,000 years old, I don't know if we'll find any, but if we do, then I want to know what to compare it with. So what are the possibilities for these big boulders? They got deposited during the Ice Age, that's fine, but were they all deposited directly by the ice? And the answer is no. These guys were deposited directly by the Okanagan Ice Sheet in the late Wisconsin time. And the evidence for that is the glacial till that these boulders are sitting upon. But there are plenty of boulders, basalt and otherwise, that are further south from here where the ice sheet never got, and yet those boulders are sitting all over the place. So what's the story there if those boulders were not deposited directly by the ice? And the answer is, they were deposited by water. Ice Age floods. And if we say that, there are two possibilities. One possibility is truly the boulder got caught in a flood the boulder came from the ice sheet somehow, and that boulder just got tumbled ass over tea kettle down the stream of where the ice age floods were, uh, were uh, you know, flowing. And that's a flood tumbled boulder, and there's plenty of those in the, in the middle and the floor of uh, major coolies uh, in southern Washington, let's say. But there's another possibility, and it's a common possibility, and it's a bit of a mind-blowing possibility. And again, it's not this guy. These Jaeger rock milk duds are definitely ice deposited directly. Good old-fashioned glacial erratics. But this third choice, this almost unbelievable choice, is that you can take a part of the ice sheet, you can break it away due to some sort of catastrophic event, Boulders like these that are in the ice sheet itself suddenly start taking a ride in an iceberg that is floating on top of the Ice Age flood water. The boulder, the erratic, then finally comes to rest wherever the iceberg decides to take a rest. The iceberg is floating and eventually getting into some quiet water somewhere. The flood water goes away, the iceberg melts, and then that boulder is perched high into the side of an Ice Age flood channel. Like in the Columbia River Gorge on the way to Portland, like up high into the side and major flood pathways in southern and even central Washington. But these guys here are not that. These guys here were far enough north, were north of the Withrow Moraine, and nobody is saying that these milk duds in northern Washington on the Waterville Plateau are from the floods. They are from the late Wisconsin ice advance less than 20,000 years ago. All right, can we get a map? Where are we? Sure, we can do it quickly. I left Ellensburg this morning, Sunday morning, drove over to Vantage, up to Afreda, up and over the Beasley Hills, dropped into Moses Cooley, got on US 2, hung a right, got myself to Withrow, crossed the moraine. So the southern margin of this ice sheet in northern Washington, this is the Canadian ice sheet coming down over the border. Uh, so uh, for the last hour, I've been driving around underneath the Okanagan ice sheet, looking at landscapes and looking at all these amazing boulders. So I'm, I'm here, basically. Now you recall that this is 
the last time, the most recent time that this ice sheet came over the border. So if you want a number, we're talking about uh, a nice little snapshot 17,000 years ago. And the ice here is about a thousand feet thick. You'll notice up in the mountains, there's plenty of ice as well. Of course, over to create Glacial Lake Missoula. So this is late Wisconsin time, and this is the story that is, is definitely a thing. Yes. But please recall that I'm really wondering about earlier ice advances, and I'm wondering about all the carving of these coolies, including Moses Cooley, including Grand Cooley. Are we sure all that carving of the channeled scablands by the angry floodwater is younger than 20,000 years ago. I have serious doubts about that. But today we're simply up under here looking at evidence of the late Wisconsin, the story that everyone agrees upon, that these are boulders dropped directly by the Okanagan Lope. If you like, we can look at Brett's as well. Same kind of map, 1928. We're not talking about Spokane today. We're talking about this other ice sheet. And I'm close to Mansfield now. That says Mansfield on Brett's map. And he also agrees in 1928 that I'm wandering around up here. By the way, I'm not far from Chelan. I'm, we're under the print here. But if you've ever driven from the town of Chelan, across the Columbia River, you well, let's do it on the other map. You're like, where's Chelan? Well, Chelan's under this ice, Lake Chelan, in other words, the town of Chelan. But if you've ever driven from the town of Chelan up McNeil Canyon and you climb and you climb and you come over McNeil Summit, uh, that's where I am. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just to the east of McNeil Summit. So I'm basically between the town of Chelan and the town of Mansfield. And so we're under ice and Brett's is saying, sure, Wisconsin, in other words, the most recent advance. You want 17,000 years ago? That's fine, says Brett's. But remember, Brett's has much thicker ice and much more substantial ice age flooding, at least 100 years ago, coming from the margin of the Spokane ice, which he doesn't have any evidence for, except for he's following the hints of Moses Cooley up to where he totally loses it. And that's where he puts this margin of this former uh, penultimate ice sheet, the Spokane ice sheet. And please recall that he has the penultimate ice sheet, the Spokane ice sheet over Spokane, and he doesn't even bother with the Wisconsin margin, which is further to the north. So I don't know, have you been up here in the Waterville Plateau before? There's good roads, plenty of paved roads. It's flat, as the name in Plateau implies. There's plenty of agriculture. But I don't know how you can drive up here and not notice these incredible fields of milk duds, of huge boulders, most of them up here on the Waterville Plateau basalt, these enormous milk duds, and this is mostly private land so I'm staying pretty close to the shoulder of the road, but not all of the erratics here, not all of the boulders that were somehow dropped here during the Ice Age are basalt. Here's a beautiful plutonic rock. Looks to be some sort of diorite or granodiorite. Salt and pepper, in other words. Another granite, but different in composition. Glacial till in the foreground, 
all sorts of stones of different composition. And it's that glacial till that is the substrate here. These giant boulders are nested in glacial till. Poorly sorted sand, cobbles, boulders. Daddy's doing the splits. So maybe to be expected, this glacial till is dominated by basaltic class. That's each of these black guys, semi-rounded, semi-rounded, mostly angular. And again, if I swing out, maybe zoom in for you a little bit, you can kind of take a survey of this exposure. This is glacial till. There's a sandy matrix and there's no organization. There's no stratigraphy. There's no layering. There's no lines. There's no organization by size. And yes, occasionally there are some granites or gneisses that got picked up from the north. But I guess surprising to me, oh, why not? Let's take a ride. Here we go. I'm going to get a bunch of stuff in my socks. It's worth it. You're worth it. Hang on, Patrick. Yeah, I expected this to be more heterogeneous, I must say. So here's my hand for scale. And there's a substantial amount of glacial till here that mantles the top of the Waterville Plateau. If we are north of Withrow, if we're under the ice itself. And I brought my hammer up here. Why? Well, to show you that it's it's not exactly cemented. I'm kind of out of hands now. You see that it's pretty loose stuff. Now, I think my question, well, first of all, a statement. So this, everyone agrees, is late Wisconsin glacial till. The ice was here. The ice was up here in the sky. A thousand feet of glacial ice was sitting right here. And this stuff is compact, but I wouldn't say that it's, you know, super, constant, super uh, cemented. Now, as soon as I say that to you, Am I sure the ice was on top of this? Is this protect potentially glacial till that was deposited as the ice was uh, withering away? I guess that's possible, maybe probable. But here's my question. If I'm somehow able to find some glacial till that Brett was sure was an older generation of till over by Spokane, or if I'm able to this fall to find some Cheney glacial till, which apparently was older yet. Is it going to look like this? Is it going to feel like this? Is it going to be this loose? Is the glacial till from 100,000 years ago or more, if I can find it, how different is it going to be than this very late Wisconsin glacial till? That's my question. And that's the main reason that I wanted to come up here and show this to you. Now, I see a couple of other non-basaltic clasts, but do I really feel like scampering like a water skipper over this surface? Well, I have to now, don't I? Okay, well... You want to see my fancy footwork? This episode of Nick from the Moraine, Nick from the Glacial Till, brought to you by Hocus. Hocus, they sure are ugly. Hocus. All right. Rounded. 
a green quartzite perhaps, maybe a serpentinite. Okay, we got a couple others here. Oh, I'll just zoom for you. I can't get up there. Hey! Can't get up there. Diorite class, very well rounded. Granite class, towards you go there. <laughs> 